All right, welcome back, uh, all of you independents out there and uh, free radicals. Free is the optimum word here. Uh, free moral agents, free to think for yourselves, free to disagree, even with the prevailing great progressive movement that is unfolding, that is now uh, in a little bit of a turf war, at least the Bernie and Tulsi people are, uh, because the Bernie people don't know what's in Bernie's bill. All right, I'm just saying it. You can, again, watch a video I did from yesterday, uh, look up my friend Alan, who I, I think cross-referenced in the last video and basically went over uh, his entire article at medium.com. It was a commentator I was watching this morning who I haven't watched in a while because I get sick of all of the I'm smarter than you rhetoric that I hear in the videos and that I'm, I'm going to use big words to impress you or I'm going to, to go off on these tangents that uh, don't even go along with the flow of the video, but, you know, it's a stream of consciousness thing, and I get that because that's kind of what I do. Um, but we hear about, you know, Tulsi Gabbard's, again, her position and how she uh, called something Medicare choice, and therefore it's not Medicare for all because she called it Medicare choice. Mm, it's actually the same, it's the same bill, okay? Uh, kind of like when Tulsi has the off, Fossil Fuels Act, okay, that's actually better than the Green New Deal. Because the Green New Deal, as it stands right now, at least the way Democrats like AOC have uh, promoted it, it's a non-actionable, non-binding resolution basically telling people, hey, get on board, get on board with the fake Green New Deal that we're doing here. If you're serious about the Green New Deal, <clears throat> uh, the Green Party, uh, and I keep talking about the Green Party because even though I'm probably not that radical uh, and I don't drive a Prius and I don't drink latte and I think I'm probably more comfortable around rednecks than people who are from the Ivy League, um, at least the Green Party uh, means what they say. And uh, they don't put out a whole bunch of crap about um, that you need to go follow our plan, even though there's really no plan, it's just an outline of what needs to happen, but nobody's actually proposing legislation. So Tulsi comes along and proposes legislation. It's called the Off Fossil Fuels Act. She comes along and she says, well, my bill, the uh, Medicare Choice Plan, is better. Uh, or it does something that I think um, the other bill doesn't accomplish. Now, um, yes, the people who want to abolish private health insurance, by the way, Sweden, which is, this is, this plan supposedly is modeled after uh, what's going on in Sweden, and Sweden supposedly is the best, and customer ratings and, you know, constituent uh, satisfaction rates are through the roof, right, in Sweden. Sweden has private insurance. I don't know, 10% of it is private, so they didn't eliminate all of it. In fact, I believe in Sweden, um, some of the hospitals are private hospitals that are contracted. Uh, so this model of abolishing everything and trying to be more like Sweden um, is disingenuous. Look, folks, can we just agree that we want to get people covered and we want to get all people covered and we don't want an Obamacare model? The single payer thing would be great where you have to force doctors to do what you tell them to do, but um, I'm not sure how they're going to respond to that. And Alan made that point in his article. So if you have a hybrid plan where everybody is covered and the poorest among us don't have to pay anything, isn't that a win? Instead, we're, we're hung up on words and semantics. And it's getting kind of foolish. That's why I think I've decided I'm doubling down now supporting Tulsi Gabbard. And I, I don't think I want to have anything to do with Bernie Sanders. And as much as I like the spirit of what Bernie is about, and I think many of his supporters are good and faithful and decent people, I think they have to come to terms with the fact that um, it's... And Tulsi people are called... Um, 
cultists all the time. Uh, some of these Bernie people are acting very cult-like and in very dogmatic and very abrasive and very condescending, and I could go on and on. And early on, when I started this channel and I was uh, the Save America channel and I was the Save America guy over on Twitter, um, I started getting attacked um, by people who are very self-righteous and think they have all the answers to all of the personal conflicts that we have between each other, uh, a lot of it based on race or sex or sexual orientation, and I, <clears throat> that's not my lane, and I don't, I don't travel in that lane. I travel in the lane of economic populism. Those other issues, I think, are very important, but I think your top three or four issues have to do with um, the economy, probably, whether it's the military-industrial complex, which uh, also has to do with humanity and the survival of the human race. Same with climate change, which um, I used to be kind of a skeptic on that, but I'm seeing that uh, real hard data that is pointing in a direction that is scary. And as a human being, you have to be objective and see... This is where I'm not seeing, I'm seeing this dogmatic, uh, I'm not bending. Uh, there's a word that I don't like here, it's Medicare choice. How dare she go off the reservation? And by the way, um, like I said in the other video, um, this, this information has been out there for a while about how Tulsi would do this. And more importantly, though, um, it shows how... I guess, thin-skinned people are when it comes to their support for Tulsi Gabbard. Um, there was another commentator that said she was a centrist. And I was just like, <laughs> her her position on war, okay? And I guess, here's the, here's the, the rub. They don't want any talk about um, dealing with terrorism. They don't want any talk about that. Even though we're, as a country, helping fund terrorism through the money trail that goes through Saudi Arabia. So I guess we're supposed to just pretend that doesn't exist, and I think that's really stupid. It's kind of like my position on the border. If you want to take the front door off the house, do it, but you're going to have some serious problems. You need a door on the house, and you need to know who's coming in the house. Uh, I do not object to the idea of taking care of the least of these that come to the border with their children, okay? And um, there seems to be a blind spot, though, with this idea of just let everybody in and don't question it. Uh, I'm not there with you. And if you want to call that uh, a hateful position or anything like that, uh, go at it, have at it. You know, um, I'm, like I said, I'm, there are some things about me that are conservative, I guess. I would just call it practical. Uh, even though I think uh, the only place that really would support my top five issues are probably in the Green Party, and even though they may disagree with me on what I just talked about, uh, I'm willing to hold my nose a little bit and say, you know what, if we can get rid of the military-industrial complex, or at least um, tone it down or tame it, that I'm all in. But when it comes to this... Um, progressive media bailout, and I don't mean like they're giving money to anybody, I mean they're bailing on Tulsi Gabbard, uh, and then they're saying, well, we might as well just coalesce around Bernie, because Bernie's going to be the better candidate, uh, and Bernie's got the infrastructure, Bernie's got the support, and Tulsi's not even for Medicare for All. That's what I've been hearing the last 24 hours. And it's, by the way, it's a bunch of BS. It's a bunch of BS. And I think most of these people know it. I think they were looking for an off-ramp, and they found an off-ramp. And now they can just say, well, I like Tulsi. She's good on foreign policy, but, you know, let's, let's talk about, let's mince words. Let's talk about her. And by the way, without examining what's in Bernie Sanders' bill, that's the Senate bill. And by the way, the House bill is better than the Senate bill. And then Tulsi's bill, I think, is as good as the House bill, if not better. Um, and is more detailed and has has more nuance in it. 
But again, if look, here's the thing. If you don't like the Swedish healthcare model, which uh, Bernie has cited and numerous progressives have talked about uh, ad nauseum, or if you don't like the Swedish model, we don't have to do the Swedish model. I guess we go for some other model that just excludes any uh, private entities that I know people are all worried, hey, um, they're going to rake in huge profits and so forth. Well, that's what regulations are for. And you'll have to write some new legislation or write it into the current legislation, whatever you have to do. But I'm sure there's a way to do it where everybody gets covered and the rich people, if they want to pay for their own insurance or, which by the way, takes them out of that usage pool. So if they're buying their own stuff and they want to buy their own stuff, it applies, by the way, to public education. Uh, if somebody wants to send their kid to a private school, are you going to outlaw private schools? <laughs> that, that, that just is not feasible, and everybody knows that. Everybody knows it. But when you apply it, see education, health care, health care, okay, it's a human right. I'm there. I'm there. It's, you, people should not die because they don't have health insurance. Tulsi's plan will fix it. Bernie's plan will fix it. Uh, and the, you know, the House plan will fix it. So I'm not sure, other than semantics, where the hang-up is. And I think the hang-up is a kind of a cumulative thing with Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, you go, go defend her when she goes on NPR, for instance, and she gets beat up. And talk about the food fight so you can get clicks and waves and subscribers, whatever it is that you're going to get. All right? But then come around the corner and also say, well, and this is just a complete disqualifier for Tulsi Gabbard now. And I'm not mentioning names because I'm classier than mentioning the names. Because um, these people, they have far more influence than I do. I'm Look at, look at this, this background here. Okay, uh, I got nothing here. I started this channel on a whim. And I'm ready to pull the whole thing on a whim as well. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to just start talking about the Green Party and uh, anti-war. Uh, because, honestly, if progressives are going to bail on Tulsi Gabbard, uh, Tulsi's going to have to go hard after libertarians and, and conservatives, those evil conservatives and Republicans or whoever else. Uh, would fill that gap, but without progressives, I don't think Tulsi can do this. And especially independent media types. All right, but uh, I'm a little frustrated. Um, I would say this don't defend Tulsi Gabbard on one hand and highlight something that happened between her and some neoliberal commentators. Don't, don't bother doing that if on the back end you're going to hit her on what I believe is a, a false accusation on her health care plan. All right? And if you have any issues with what I'm saying, go back a couple of videos. Watch the video I did using my friend Alan's really well-written article about what's actually in the bill. Okay? This is a big thing nowadays. You know, the Republicans used to make fun of a lot of progressives because they didn't, well, they weren't really progressives. They were just... Uh, garden variety neoliberals who were pushing Obamacare and they hadn't read the bill because it was too complicated. That's why they didn't read the bill. This, by the way, is not complicated. So uh, if you haven't read the bill, it's probably intellectually lazy and then disingenuous when you come back and do a video and you tell us how uh, the word choice is a non-starter. Just, it's crazy. And uh, if you're going to just say no Tulsi, then you're not going to get the foreign policy that we all deserve, which is less war, less intervention. Oh, and by the way, if you're going to go after her because, you know, she didn't like what happened on 9-11 to our country, you're going to lose about 90% of the country on that. So I don't think that's a winning strategy. Uh, ultimately, you'll get another neolib because this is just going to divide and, and all of you people that think Warren is going to save the day, if Warren gets in there, uh, again, she might as well be Mike Pence, as far as I'm concerned. Um, all of you, you know, 
impeachers out there. I see, and again, I'm okay with impeachment, but just do it for the right reasons. And you can see some of my Twitter posts regarding that. All right, I've rambled way too much today. I'm frustrated. I'm tired. I'm tired of the BS that's coming uh, from a bunch of people that I thought were honest brokers and who had the best interests of people who don't have health care and who are like one major emergency away from catastrophe. I don't think that's it anymore. I think it's views and clicks and how can I be all condescending and how can I, you know, get rid of Tulsi Gabbard because she's just too controversial. I think it's happening now within the movement that's supposed to support her. And um, I don't know what to make of that other than the fact that our political system is completely broken and I'll be happy to start talking about a Green Party and a Green Party candidate, whoever that is and whoever emerges from uh, that, that movement because at least those folks are honest and even if I disagree with them, I don't think they're going to eat their own. So that's my view. See you soon.